Hello and welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. My name's Thomas. We are back on the channel today with another Extra Time video. This is going to be our reaction to our FA Cup exit to Manchester City 2-0 uh, at home. Uh, joined by Terry McAllister, we're going to be giving you our views and opinions on how the team set up, how the team performed, and then obviously we'll talk about the goals as well. So, Terry, what, what were your thoughts going into the game? First of all, obviously, we knew we had several injuries. We know how good their bench was going to be. Was it, was it maybe a bit of a, a pessimistic outlook or what, what were you expecting? Um, I was expecting us to have to play a really, really good game and for Man City to have a bad game. And we got, in my opinion, half of that, but not the other half, which was crucial. I think we set up in many ways with the same mentality we had in the away game at the at Anfield, sort of tried to do a job on City, tried to stifle them, tried to make the most of set pieces and any opportunities we we got. But at the end of the day, it's not just true of this game, it's true of, of all cup competitions across football. If you're going to win a cup competition, you need to have the appropriate amount of good luck in key, in key moments. And we just didn't have it in this game. Um, the key, you know, first goal comes and you know the, the luck doesn't isn't with us it you know bounces back off the crossbar and onto the, if, if you're going to win the cup you need that to bounce out to play and then you get to penalties whereas it obviously didn't happen so I can't fault any of the players if I'm honest the manager or anyone like that it was just we were playing as Carlo said the best side in the world and come up short at the, at the end. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, going into the game, we knew we were going to be without the likes of Hammers, uh, especially the goalkeepers as well. We knew Robin Olsen was going to be out and Jordan Pickford. So, Jean Virginia came in, who uh, we'll, we'll get into in just a moment. But in, t in terms of squad depth, I, I was personally quite pessimistic for the game. I thought we were definitely going to struggle to get much from it with, you know, the likes of Decorey. We knew we were going to have to sit uh, quite defensively. We, you know, we really didn't, we didn't necessarily have that player who was going to drive us forwards like he did. But as you mentioned, I mean, you know, we didn't play badly by any means. We just, yeah, we were relying on City to have a bad game, which they didn't have, to be honest. We we, we performed defensively very well. And then, I mean, the, the incident with the goal towards the end, it, it was frustrating, but we, we didn't really do much wrong. I think maybe we, we knew we were going to have to be good from set pieces. You know, we you know we, we know we have that in our locker. Uh, we had Holgate and Dinier taking the long throw-ins as well. I think maybe we could have utilised them slightly better. I'm not sure we created you know, the the absolute golden opportunities that we probably wanted from them. But we knew we were going to have to come in defensively, which we did very well. There's times where we've gone into games defensively and just not defended very well at all. The organisation hasn't been there, but uh, I, I really can't fault, fault it against City. So kind of starting off in the game, what, what was your reaction to the first half? Of course, it was, it was neither, you know, neither side had too many absolutely key chances. Obviously, City dominated the ball, but I think we ended up having more maybe shots on target in the first half than they did. Uh, especially, you know, from the set pieces that I mentioned. So, what did you make of that first half? It was going according to plan, really. I mean, you know, people will, you know, so usually pundits who don't support Everton will bemoan the lack of, you know, opening up and the lack of, you know, you know, ambition, I suppose, against Man City. But it's like, what do you want teams to do? Like, you know, we don't do that. At our best, we don't do that against anyone. Never mind, you know, the, the best footballing team in world football. And yet they had 200 passes and we had about 29 or whatever it was. But it's like, who cares? The, the score was nil-nil. Like, you, know, you won't play Man City every week. And if, if it works, it works. And it was working up until that point. I think, um, you know, some of the players are question marks over them. You know, you, you know, you know Godfrey's going to be as good as, as he is every time. You know... You know um, what Mina's going to give you, etc. You know what Luca Dean's going to give you. Some of the players who, who were a little bit more, you know, unsure of. Some of them had great games, like Andre Gomez. I, I've you know decried Andre Gomez quite a few times of this season, but he had one of his best games in an Everton shirt in this game. And um, I think we've actually so we've actually can put a finger on now what his best sort of role is. You know, like oh, he doesn't defend, he doesn't create, etc. He was really good at beating the press because he's so good, you know, in, in possession in the sense of, you know, his, his passing's really crisp and really nice. When he was getting pressed, he was finding ways out and finding players. He wasn't just hoofing it. He was recycling the ball very well and very carefully. And that's what he was doing. So he stood out for me in the first half. I thought, if we're going to get anything out of this game, it's going to be down to Andre Gomez. That was my feeling at half time. It's going to come through him. Now, he might not be long for this team. Um, in the long term, there might be we might look to bring in somebody better than him in the summer for that position. But 
what we've got right now is what we've got, and he he stepped up in this game. So I'm, I'm, I will kick him when he's when he's playing badly, but when he plays well, I'll I'll point it out as well. And he was he was excellent. He was one of the highlights of the first half for me. Yeah, I agree. I thought he had a quite a decent game when he was on the ball. I've got to say at the start, I was disappointed to see Davies on the bench in, instead of him. I, I did want to see Tom Davies start, but I think Gomez did, did just well, you know, he, he did justify it in the first half. And I mean, in, in general, in the first half, as you mentioned, they were having a lot of the possession, but there wasn't too many key chances being created because we, we were stifling them very well. And it, it's not as even they were playing badly, and they played their normal high tempo possession game. Obviously, they, they did have a bit of squad rotation. They didn't have the likes of João Cancelo, Kevin De Bruyne in the first half, which might have had a knock on in that you know that final third. But I mean, but the likes of Phil Foden, Bernardo Silva on the pitch are still going to be really dangerous. I, I agree with Andre Gomez, very good in the first half. Uh, probably looking for a bit more from Sigerson as well. And I thought at, at times Alan he, he, he seemed destined for you know a, at least a card in that first half. I'm not sure when he actually picked up his yellow card, but there was, there was a couple in the angles, which, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but obviously you don't want too many of them. But against the likes of City, you do need someone who is going to break up the play, relieve the pressure on the defence a bit. Um, other than that, again, the, yeah, as I mentioned, the, the first half was quite quiet. Then going into the second half, neither team really made any changes. It was it was pretty much more of the same for, for quite a while. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, it, it was, you know, I think both teams will have gone in at half time and both managers will have just said just carry on as you go and it'll come and obviously only one can be right but um, yeah I, I was like you with um, Tom Davies I was like I was surprised to see him not playing but when the game actually got in you know got into its flow I was like I can see why because we've got Alan there and Davies next to him will do the same job and I think you know as good as Tom Davies can be on, even on his best day He's not as good on the ball as Andre Gomez. I think there's only one or two players in the whole squad who are better on the ball in possession than Andre Gomez in terms of keeping hold of it. Um, so I understood that. Um, I did worry it proved to be, you know, maybe not the reason, but it proved to be a factor. I did worry um, in the second half, like as this game goes on, it's going to get more and more difficult because they can turn to their bench as they ultimately did and bring on you know, to Bruyne, yeah, people like that. And we were looking and we had, you know, loads of kids who aren't really realistically going to get on, even if, you know, even if there was injuries in the positions they played, but were likely to just shuffle the team around and get a senior player on and just change things rather than bring a like for like on if it's a under 23 mm-hmm. player. So I, I was worrying as the, as the game went on, it would get more difficult and that did prove to be the case because the Bruyne ultimately, you know, He's involved in the in the goal that we end up conceding, and yeah, as I went back to before, did the look at the key moment wasn't with us. We needed we needed a bit little bit of jamminess, and it wasn't there for us. Yeah, exactly. The second half carried on in very much the same vein as you mentioned. Both managers would have just said, you know what, both game plans were being followed pretty well. There was just you know there was just no goals yet, but it it, it was that kind of final 10, 20 minutes when you look to the bench, and you know in normal situations like that you've been defending for a while, maybe you're a bit tired. The one thing you don't want to see is Mares and De Bruyne coming on, and but but we knew that was going to be a reality the whole game. I'm sure Ancelotti was just hoping we would get that goal from a set piece that would maybe negate them coming on. We we know they're going to have an instant impact, but uh, we we can definitely talk about the the goals to start off with. First goal, kind of Yerimina probably gets beaten a bit too easily by De Bruyne. Uh, I can't remember, and then I can't actually remember who it was that got the shot off, hits the bar, comes down to Gundogan, who's kind of ghosted into the box completely free and kind of heads it in. So what what did you make of their first goal? As I said, it, it, it's you know it's a good move. You know, De Bruyne takes it past. Uh, I can't, it might have been me, and he sort of moves it past the defender. Uh, does a throws a little dive in because he thinks he's uh, lost the ball. Uh, I'm like yourself, can't remember who took the shot. Um, basically, the, the shot gets taken. Virginia makes a really good save, tips it onto the bar, and then as it comes down, it just lands perfectly in front of Gundogan. And what can you do? It's like you need a, we need that to go anywhere but there and that's where it lands and then you feel like the game's over more or less at that at that at that goal because much like and it, it was a similar sort of thing with the you know under different circumstances the when we went out the league cup to Man United you can see the goal late in the game after they you know looked at their brench and brought on the cavalry and we've got no one to bring on to change the game 
and then after that you just can see a second and that's inevitable because you, you you know you've got tired legs trying to chase an equaliser and it creates more space for the opposition who've got quality who've just come on the pitch and as fresh as anything it happens with Man United in the League Cup quarter final and it's happens against Man City in the FA Cup quarter final it's just one game too many for us yeah I, th- I think the second the first goal was definitely unlucky but I, th- I think there was I, I was quite critical of Gomez after the game and after his performance I think he played quite well but Gundogan, I think he's maybe got 15 or 16 goals in all competitions this season. You know what he's going to do. You know he's going to arrive late into the box. And it's kind of no one was tracking him. And I guess it's that it, it, it's that level of concentration, you know, for the last 10 minutes. We, I mean, our focus throughout the whole game was absolutely brilliant. But it, it, it's that final five, 10 minutes where no one's really picked his run up into the box. And that's the difference between the two sides. You know, they have quality players who are up to that standard 100% of the time. And we had tired legs. No, no one was tracking him. And of course... It, you know, one time it might hit the bar and go over, it might just go straight over, but it hit the bar directly to the head of Gundogan. So, quite frustrating, but, and, and then the second goal, as you mentioned, you, you'd expect that. I mean, for all the, you know, the, the journalists on Twitter saying, you know, we, we went out, I can't remember which one specifically it was, we went out of both quarterfinals and ambitiously well. You, you've seen there in the last two minutes or so, you go and attack City, you put everything forwards, that's what happens. And, I mean, we all knew that. I, I'm not sure why certain... Certain journalists who are paid to give their opinion, you know, on Twitter, seem to think that we should have opened up against City and not played the way we did. But yeah, not a bad performance by any means, and, the, and those goals were, were were quite unfortunate to concede in the end. Obviously, that second one was kind of inevitable, and you know, we we look to our bench after this after the first goal goes in, and the, and the Wobie comes off, and it's like, what more can we do? I mean, even Joshua King uh, was cup tied for the game. I mean, even that could have made a slight difference. We didn't really have that going for us, but. As, as we mentioned, it was a pretty strong team performance and there was one player who I think stood out in particular, which maybe surprised some people. Xiao Virginia came in for the two injured goalkeepers. He, he had a pretty torrid spell with Reading. He was on loan last season and I think he got recalled or, or sent back in January because he, he really couldn't find much form. And I think a lot of people were quite nervous, you know, seeing how he, how he you know, signed up to the task. What did you think about his performance? Yeah, I mean, he did well given the circumstances. He made you know, a few good saves, uh, one very good save, but it was just before the goal. I don't want to go overboard on him and say, oh, you know, he can be the number two now and all that. I'd, I'd, what I'd like, the best case scenario for me from this game is that he's attracted the eye of someone in the championship who needs a goalkeeper who can take him on loan and actually play him. You know, not just a championship club who've got, you know, want to bring them in to compete with their established goalkeeper because that's, you know, I understand why clubs want to do that, but we're not interested in that. I hope a club who think we've got no goalkeeper can take a punt on him next year and get him some game time and, you know, we can make a decision from there because, you know, it's a high profile game and he's gave a good account of himself and that sometimes it is only as simple as that to get him a move. But that's, I think, be the best case scenario. Yeah, it's probably done his prospects the world of good as well for next season because he did have that spell at Reading and he was, I think he started the season then after a few games he was benched again and then obviously, as you mentioned, there's, there's no point in him being there to be on the bench. So and maybe a few championship clubs looked and looked at him after that and thought, you know what, he's just not ready for that step up and hopefully this game and I'm not sure whether Robin Olsen's going to be back. I think he was back in training so I'd imagine he'll come straight back into the side. But, you know, if he didn't, it, you know, Virginia's shown he, he does have the capability of stepping up but he... He will need consistent game time next week. So, I mean, were there any players that particularly disappointed you? I mean, there, there weren't any standouts for me. I think, as I mentioned, my, my only quarrel from the game was I, I thought our set pieces, we, we could have created a few more chances, but, I mean, what can you do? But, I mean, there was a couple of moments with Yerry Mina. I think Zinchenko cleared one off the line from a Mina header. I don't know whether that was just before half time. But when you need your set pieces to be absolutely on the ball, I think they were the majority of the time. But we've seen Digne have games where, he delivers everyone perfectly and, you know, we do very well. And, and in this game, it's, it's, a, it's a fine margin kind of game. So maybe a few more excellent deliveries for me. But have you got any kind of quarrels to pick with anyone? Not really, no. I mean, yeah, how could you? Against a team like that, where, you know, the injuries we had to, like, we had no hammers, no decore. Um, and with the setup the way it was, they all did their jobs well. Like, it's, it's possible to make no mistakes and to still lose. You know what I mean? It's yeah, exactly. yeah. Just, just one of those things. Um, so now I've got no quarrel with any of the players considering the task that they had in front of them. Yeah, uh, and now looking forward, uh, we're out of our, obviously our final cup competition, head towards the league now. We have 10 games left to play. I mean, 
what what's the requirement now for you? We're out of both competitions. What, what, I mean, I'm to be honest, I'm not sure being out of both competitions really changes the goal for the season at all. But what what are you looking for now? No, um, fi- you know, finishing European qualification, whatever that may be. I, I, I don't think, and I've never thought we'll qualify for the Champions League just because of the depth, you know, of, of in, the, in the squads compared to other teams who are in and around. You know, those positions, I think they've got well more school strength and depth. Europe, though, whether it's the Europa League or that Europa Conference League or whatever, any of them qualify for European competition and it's been a good season. And big picture terms, I, I am, for the first time as a Evertonian, probably, I mean, I may have felt this during Moise's heyday, but never since then have I thought in, in full certainty that we will win a trophy under this manager. I think this season it's come too early and we've ran into two very good teams in the quarterfinals of both Cups while we had you know, some bad luck with injuries. We played um, Man United who were on song at that time in December and we had lots of injuries and we've played Man City who even without injuries if we didn't have them we would have struggled to beat them because they're all conquering at the minute. I think, well, if Carlo Ancelotti gets a run of years as a manager here, which you know we all hope he does, I think he'll definitely win a trophy here. He's a, he's a trophy winning manager. These games have just come a little bit too early for him, but who knows what next year or the year after could bring. He's, he's a winner, and I can feel this. I feel different now than I've felt for a long time about trophies in Everton. There was a sense of inevitability under the last five years um, about not winning a trophy with us now, I feel like some, it's different and it's just a matter of time and getting better players and, you know, just eventually, you know, plug it away and it'll, it'll happen. I'm convinced. Yeah. Them. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think the main thing this year, as you mentioned, two very tough opponents, I, I guess it's the look of the draw really as well. I mean, when you are the likes of Man City, Chelsea, uh, Manchester United, it, it doesn't really matter who you get. You're going to have to play anyone. But for us, I mean, I mean, it's a, it, it's not really relevant, but obviously England's World Cup run, I know, no one really cares about England, but there's no way that team should have been in the semi-final. It's that team, you know, they've, they've just got lucky to face the opponents they've got. And this year, we didn't have the luck of the draw. OK, on a different day, maybe, again, that, that shot goes over the bar and, you know, we, we get a better chance. But next season, again, it's just, I mean, you, you look at the teams that were left. Leicester, obviously, we've beaten this season. Bournemouth, Southampton, Sheffield United, and we end up with Manchester City. Annoying, but you, obviously, you do have to play the, the best teams at some point. You just hope it's a, it's a bit later on in the tournament. But I agree. I, I have no doubt, you know, in the in the manager's chances of winning a trophy here, and when it'll come, whether it's next year or in the next couple of years, who really knows? But yeah, very optimistic. But that, that's pretty much it for the end of the video. Out of both cup competitions, obviously European places, that, that's been the goal all season, and it has to be the absolute push now. Uh, so, I mean, that's all for me. So, thank you all very much for watching. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. What you thought about the match? Uh, check out everyone's social media, and thank you very much for watching. And join us next time on the Toffee Blues. Oh, no, they're